All right, so before we jump into 2.2 and start talking about our production possibility frontier, we have to talk about one of the most important things, and you'll hear about this in accounting classes and stuff like that. So this is still part of 2.1, is we're gonna talk right now about what are called sunk costs. So this is something that everybody knows about, everybody's aware of it, we all get taught it, but then actually implementing this practice in real life is incredibly difficult. So <clears throat> we first have to define what are these things called sunk costs. So sunk costs are costs that were incurred in the past and cannot be recovered. So it is very frustrating to deal with sunk costs and oftentimes uh, we deal with them incorrectly. So the book uh, does this, you know, has this great example, and this is actually an example that is true to my life. Um, and, you know, anybody that has been a, a friend of mine for a while knows that this is true. Uh, you know, I will walk out of a movie halfway through if the movie sucks. I will leave the movie. I won't sit there and wait for the movie to get better because I've already paid the money. It's gone. I can't get it back, but I can get that extra hour back and go do something, anything else with my time, than wait for that movie to get better because it's never going to get better, right? So some instances of sunk costs are, you know, um, or the sunk cost fallacy. So some of the errors, I guess we would say, we can list some of the errors here. So it would be sitting through the whole movie when you hate it. Uh, one of the other errors that, you know, is often talked about or just is often practiced is, uh, you know, if you've gone to the Chinese restaurant in town here, right, you might have eaten so much that you may not feel very great at the end of it, right? And oftentimes we do this to try to, like, maximize the amount of food per penny that we get in terms of the buffet or whatever, right? But again, that's a sunk cost, you know? So, uh, you know, stuffing ourselves past the point of comfort to quote unquote, get your money's worth out of an all-you-can-eat buffet. And I didn't think that this was an acronym, but if you go to cities and you want all-you-can-eat sushi, you can just Google in Google Maps, A-Y-C-E sushi, and it'll find all the ones that have the all-you-can-eat sushi, which is great. If you're going to eat sushi, that's definitely the way to do it, in my opinion. Just a little pro tip. Um, but even then, right, you know, stuffing yourself to, to get the most, you know, just eat until you are no longer hungry and then, and then stop. But instead, we too often take into account the fact that, oh, we paid, you know, 10 or 15 or $30 to get into this buffet and we want to get the most of it. And sometimes, man, buffets get real expensive. I used to live in Vegas for a little bit and my parents came to visit for Christmas and I was like, you know, working a fancy job. So I was like, I'm going to take them out to a fancy buffet for Christmas. It was like 200 and some dollars per person for this buffet. Now it was like lobster tail and crab and filet mignon and all sorts of stuff. But I mean, like, oh, the worst part was, is the line. It, not only was it expensive, it took us like two hours to get into this buffet that we then, that I then paid, you know, $800 total for all four of us to go to or something like that. Not an experience I would repeat. Not an experience I would repeat. Uh, that's a great, I, it, it was the one in Vegas that does the, I think it was called like spoons or something like that, because it was the one that like, they, they had everything kind of like in these smaller portions. So you could like, ha like do a tapas kind of thing. Um, it was good. Was it $800 good? No, not at all. Were my parents pleased that we had to wait in a 
two hour line. These are people that like won't wait like five minutes for somewhere. Like, no, not at all. Right. So it was an unfortunate experience for a lot of different reasons. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I definitely fell into that sunk cost fallacy there. Right. Even though, you know, I was maybe full, I was like, no, nah, we're going to wait. Like we've got a window of two hours here. Like we're going to spend the full two hours in this buffet and like make sure to get dessert, everything like that. Right. Um, you know, other kinds of sunk costs, uh, I don't know if you guys saw, it's probably like half a year now, right? Um, the Batman, Batgirl movie. Right? They, uh, they finished the filming, but then they scrapped production. And it was like, I can't remember exactly the amount of money, but, you know, $300 million was spent on filming this, you know, you know, writing and filming this movie and everything like that, right? And one of my, you know, good friends was like, what, why, what's, what's going on here? And I was like, oh, well, this sunk costs, right? Like, they, they can't get that money back. And at a certain point, they have to, a good business person will take a look and say, okay, we've spent $300 million making this. But it's going to cost an extra $200 million for us to edit it and promote it and get it into theaters and make the merchandise and yada, yada, yada. Are we going to even make the $200 million that we have to spend? And if the answer is no, if, they're only gonna, if they only expect to make you know, $100 million of that $200 million that remains on that project, the best thing to do is to cut your losses and to stop you know, and, to, and to essentially you know, throw the, the, the reel into, you know, the back of the Warner Brothers set or whatever, right? And lock it up because it doesn't make any sense to go forward. Even though you've spent all this money and all this time, and even though there's a public expectation, there was a huge outcry. The public was like, why did you do this? Why won't you just let Batgirl, you know, exist? And it's like, well, it's a business decision. All of these movies are business decisions. So this actually isn't really a mistake this was a wise move, right? This was where they were not accounting for sunk costs. And they were instead using incremental or marginal thinking and thinking about what is the, what's the benefit of us continuing this project, $100 million of sales, what's the cost of us continuing this project, $200 million, let's not do it. Doesn't matter that we spent $300 million filming it. That's in the past. So the lesson of sunk costs is to ignore any of your past errors, which is so hard to do as humans. We love to ruminate. We love to beat ourselves up. We think that it's the only way we'll learn, right? Um, and make decisions... only on what will happen in the future. Now, can we predict into the future? Not great, right? Not great. We don't have crystal balls. You know, none of us, you know, are, are you know, from doom, you know, inhaling spice, able to see the future, right? You know, like there's, there's no way for us to predict what's going to happen in the future, but we do our best with the rational, you know, senses that we have with, you know, predicting patterns based off the past in order to make good decisions based on expected values, based on reasonable expectations. A lot of economics is based on this concept of, you know, reasonable self-interest, rationality, and reasonable expectations. Questions on sunk costs. So this is one of the ones where You'll start to really see this in your life now that we've talked about it. You'll start to really kind of, you know, and again, it doesn't have to be necessarily sunk costs in terms of money. It could be sunk costs in terms of time. You know, you could decide to go to graduate school, you know, go to law school for a year and then decide, I hate law. I, ha I don't want to be a lawyer. In order to actually make that decision soundly as a, you know, as a, 
an, an economic decision maker would, you would not take into account the fact that you already spent that first year in grad school. You already spent all that money in grad school. Wow. You would just account for the fact that you are 